Hey, everybody, this is Perch, and uh, it's a real pleasure for me. I'm, I'm here talking to Dave Dorman. Uh, Dave, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me on the show. Yeah, absolutely. I um, was really excited to talk to you. I think um, I've followed your work for the entire time I've had a comic shop, and and, uh, and so you've been a big seller for me. So thank you for that, by the way. Uh, oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. It's been it's been, you know, over 40 years, I guess, since I've been uh, in the industry and, and um, I'm still enjoying what I do. I, I love to, to paint. I love to draw. And, and one of the best things about this industry is I get to go out and, you know, meet people at, at conventions, meet the fans. And, and there's, there's not a whole lot of, um, a lot of jobs that, that people have that you can actually go out and meet the, the people that you do the work for. So, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, uh, and, and and comics is is not all I do. I do a lot of other things as well. For but, sure. uh, the, the comics part of the business is what I grew up with and uh, what I love, and uh, it's it's my pleasure to be part of it. And thanks for uh, uh, thanks for being able to to expose yeah. my work to uh, hopefully your audience, a, a bigger audience, and uh, you know. Uh, I'm going to blather on. <laughs> just just Lord, say, no. Dave, stop talking, and no, uh, no. you can no, get it. Perfect. Perfect. No, I, I, I think a lot of people will be excited to to hear from you because because there's a group of people through the years, of course, who know you, know you by name, know your style, um, and they know you're behind it. And then there's a whole other group of people that instantly recognize the art, but they don't know who it was that that did it. So, right. Um, you you kind of reference it. You've done a lot in comics. Um, you did. You, I mean, a lot of your career with Star Wars, right? Yes. Some of the most iconic images we've seen there from Star Wars, right? I was lucky to be in the right place at the right time with uh, Dark Horse Comics, and uh, started out with uh, Dark Empire back in 1990, uh, right after the uh, dearth of really good Star Wars material for the fans. There was no no movies, no TV shows, no books, no comics. Marvel had stopped doing their run uh, of Star Wars uh, years before that. And, um, uh, you know, I, I came in with, uh, um, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to draw some blanks here. Uh, um, uh, 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 Tom, Tom Veach and, and Cam Kennedy. Yes. Yes. Go. Uh, you know, working with Dark Empire and then Timothy Zahn was doing the uh, yes. uh, the Thrawn trilogy and the uh, uh, paperback books, and those really started the new uh, new wave, you know, of the expanded universe in the Star Wars uh, 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 mythology. Well, it was powerful. Like you mentioned, there wasn't. It's hard to imagine now that there was a moment where you didn't have a lot of Star Wars stuff out because there's, it there's is more than enough now. It uh, is very hard, yeah. Um, um, but but that it, time, it did happen. <laughs> it did, and and it was also coming in an era where Marvel had let that license kind of expire, and and the end was more cartoonish or comic booky. And and I I don't mean that as a negative. A lot of my favorite artists definitely do that style. But you came in, and suddenly it was it was it was powerful for people because it was a very different way of visualizing Star Wars, I think, than they were used to. Right. Well, one of the things that I wanted to do and, and what was agreed upon, you know, with uh, Dark Horse and uh, Lucasfilm was they wanted something that was more cinematic mm-hmm. um, in our approach. And certainly with me uh, being a, a painter, obviously, and um, a fan of, of movie posters and, and uh, uh, illustration. Uh, I think that's uh, that fit in ex- exactly into what I was able to give them at the time was was more of a movie poster like mm-hmm. uh, cover, so that when the uh, uh, customer is, is at the store and they're scanning, you know, the hundreds of books that are available, uh, you know, that one hopefully will pop out uh, of the crowd uh, because it's a little bit different. It's, it's not a, a comic booky style. Uh, piece it's more of a more of a movie poster advertisement basically and so um uh that's what i strive to you know give them uh in in the series and and all, all the subsequent you know books that i did after that uh you know i'm a movie fan i've been since i was a kid and like i say i'm a movie poster collector and fan and and uh it was really you know 
not being able to move into into that part of the industry, the the movie advertising industry. Uh, mm-hmm. I took I took the 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 chance to to show my my approach and my work to what could be movie posters on the dark horse covers. Yeah, and and uh, uh, they've become very iconic. I agree with that. I'm very yeah. lucky to have have that uh, uh, recognition uh, for the work and um, uh, become you know part of the the history of, of illustrated Star Wars. Well, you know, I've seen you at cons before, and and we'll get to that in a second. But it, I mean, it is one of those cases where when people who might not recognize the name right away, they see the art, and immediately they know. Right. And then that's, they become fancy that way. But, but before you get much farther, I did want to throw one thing out. So there, there's a project that you have uh, called oil and water. Uh, right. And that's coming pretty soon, right? It's going to launch and people can fund it. Correct. Yeah. Uh, it's a, a book compilation of artwork that I've done uh, over my career. So oil and, and water is a book collection of art uh, that's going to cover my career, but in in small bits, I'm I'm hoping to have this as a couple of volumes of uh, of collected art. Uh, the first one uh, we're going to announce with uh, Zoop uh, next week on October the first uh, is going to be the uh, opening uh, day uh, solicitation for it, and it's going to cover pretty much uh, all aspects of of what I've done uh, from uh, the comics, uh, you know. Uh, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Aliens, Predator, Batman, um, to uh, my work that I did with Hasbro uh, d- doing G.I. Joe, which very few fans know about, although it's been, it's been getting a bigger uh, fan base. But I, I worked for uh, Hasbro for uh, six years doing artwork for internally for their um, uh, R&D department. So nobody saw that work. It was not for publication. So. Uh, there's going to be that, the Magic the Gathering artwork, some movie production artwork, some other advertising artwork, and 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 my comic artwork. So it's going to be sort of like a really nice overview of uh, of my career. And uh, I think a lot of people are going to be surprised at how much different and, and varied work that I have done uh, because they're just used to seeing me as a Star Wars artist or as a aliens artist or or you know uh gi joe artist so so for me uh, that's yeah that's that's really uh uh something that that i hope the fans will be excited to see when it comes out you you went there before i could go there uh which was the the gi joe stuff as a a big section it's it's another area where um again your your work is kind of instantly recognizable people will see this art and and they go i i i I have that or i've seen it and Uh and 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 so, tell me, like you know, how did how did they get in touch with you to do that? Like, how how did you get connected with with uh, with Asbro to do uh, that? That's a really sort of odd uh, um, set of circumstances that uh, put me in touch with Hasbro. Um, so let me dig through my uh, uh, age-rattled brain and try to uh, try to get to the the very start of that. Um, uh, I guess I guess really where it started was not with uh, with artwork at all. Uh, I had a friend who did um, military miniature modeling, and um, uh, he would travel to shows, and uh, um, he knew a bunch of the, the sculptor guys in the R and D department um, uh, of Hasbro, and uh, he had talked about my artwork to them. This would have been. Uh, probably mid eighties, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right about that. Yeah, and so uh, so I hadn't really you know hit Star Wars or anything, but I was doing work in the industry, heavy metal covers and and independent covers, covers for Dark Horse and and uh, doing you know uh, other things uh, that were outside the industry. But I I was good at doing doing characters. Obviously, I Definitely. still do. Uh, <laughs> And so um, um, he, uh, my friend, invited me to go to one of these military miniature shows, uh, where you know they set up all the miniatures on tables and people go and admire them, just like uh, 
you know, it's just like a comic show except for a game, like miniatures. And uh, um, uh, at one of the shows, uh, uh, he ran into a couple of the guys that he knew from Hasbro uh, and then introduced me to them. And uh, from there, it was uh, sending, you know, samples of some of my work uh, to them to to show that I could do what they were asking for. Now, what they were asking for was just single illustrations of the G.I. Joe characters as if they were actually really li- real life. Right. So instead of seeing it as a jointed uh, uh, figure, a uh, model, um, the... Uh, 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 the board of directors were able to see this presentation of what the character would actually look like if it was if he was alive, and that was that was what I loved to do. You know, that was <laughs> that's my forte. So uh, uh, so yeah, uh, they liked what they saw and uh, had me do a couple of pieces uh, uh, for I, I don't know the eighty four or eighty five um, uh, line. And, uh, and after that, you know, I worked for six years doing about uh, between eight and, and 12 pieces a year for them. And the paintings were, were started out at 11 by 14 and then turned into 16 by 20, a little bit larger. Um, but it was just, just the characters. Now, they weren't supposed to be published anywhere. They were supposed to be for in-house uh, uh, promotion and, and uh, uh, referencing for the sculptors and the painters and the the uh, um, you know the R and D department to approve and co- most of the characters were approved. Some of them weren't, or some of them had to be redone. But that's part of the process of, of creating characters. Um, but uh, yeah, so I ended up doing about a hundred ish pieces uh, for Hasbro GI Joe that nobody ever saw, and so my name was like a a, a ghost, you know, through the uh, GI Joe uh, 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 collectors uh, because. The hardcore collectors knew who the creators were, uh, but that artwork really doesn't get out. So, right. so they knew my name, but they didn't know the artwork. Well, fortunately, uh, from the beginning of my career, I started keeping uh, photographic uh, uh, prints and, and uh, film of all the work that I did. Smart. So I, yeah, so I have all, all reproductions of all the artwork. And... Um, uh, a few years back, um, well, probably a little bit more than a few years back, I decided to do some small, um, like uh, uh, five and a half by eight and a half little twenty-four page booklets uh, featuring the artwork, just to sell at shows, uh, to let people know, you know, it, here's what I did. If you're really interested, you know, you can buy a book. And so, uh, uh, so yeah, I did that. I ended up doing three of these small uh, books. Uh, featuring, you know, most of the work that I, I had done in G.I. Joe. And oh, the fans love it. And, you know, yeah. today, today I still get uh, uh, email uh, maybe once a week or once every two weeks, some fans saying, hey, I know uh, I saw that you released some book of this G.I. Joe artwork. You know, I still got them available. Said, yeah, I do. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that, uh, um, you know, a lot of artists do this in, in the industry. You know, they work on projects that, that aren't directly involved in comics. And that's a way uh, a lot of artists uh, right. you know, can, can make that living, is uh, is work outside of the industry. In a lot of cases, you kind of have to, don't you? I mean, it's it's you have to diversify somewhere the income comes. Otherwise, it's, it's just hard to have a stable. Yeah, if, if you're not a regular uh, artist on, on a regular book, Marvel or DC, uh, then yeah, there, there's... Uh, options that you need to have to be able to bring in that income that's, mm-hmm. that's outside of what you love to do. And, and uh, so, so yeah, it's, it's something that I learned very early on was yeah. to, to be diversified. It's, yeah. it's smart. That's yeah. So that's why a lot of people are surprised when I say I've done this and I've done that and I've done it all really. And yep. It's, just, yeah, no, you, you have to, I mean, you're, you're not, you're not in control of where these decisions are make. You have a different editor that comes in, for example, and you know, you right. gap in your, your income kind of out of yep. nowhere. I, I, I was curious, uh, one thing and nothing to do with art, but, um, I, I suspect I'm going to love your answer to this. So you did, um, before you know, we've seen all this rise of, of podcasts and YouTube shows and everything else, particularly in the last six years or so, there's been a lot more that have kind of popped out of the woodwork, but 
you had a podcast um, early in 2010. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, uh, me and, and uh, my wife did a podcast. Uh, I think we did like six six episodes, and yeah. and you know, it was just hard work. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, I envy you the uh, ability to be able to do it on a regular basis. Well, it's easier now than it was in 2010, but I mean. Yeah, but it, it was, you know, because I know a lot of people in the industry, you know, peers that have been friends for for years and years and years mm-hmm. and uh, are, are always full of stories of, of, you know, meeting, you know, old guys like, you know, Jack Kirby and, and John Buscema and, and uh, uh, you know, and, and guys who, who at, the, at the time were at the top of their game. And so we just decided, my wife and I, because she hears me talk to my friends on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we just banter back and forth about stuff. And she said, uh, you know, you should really uh, do that, you know, so people can, can hear you talk to, to each other on an informal basis, just about, you know, everything, not just about comics, but about whatever, you know, the conversation comes up. And, and uh, uh, yeah, so we did that for about uh, six episodes and it was a lot of fun, but it just turned, it, it, it wasn't uh, as fun putting it together as it was just opening the mics and just talking. Yeah. Uh, but it, it was fun. Yeah. I can't even remember what it was called and it's probably out there in the ether somewhere. It, it is, and it was called Wednesday is a Comic Book Day. Yes, yeah, yes. I, so I, I ask you this: um, I, I've I've heard it, and it's I, I took some inspiration from it because I, I started this show and everything I've been doing um, purely because I enjoyed the conversations in the comic shop, and it uh-huh. was always fun to do that. And then I was moving moving the comic shop, so it was closed for a period of time, and I felt I still wanted these conversations, so I started doing this. And then COVID hit, and so it, it kept stretching on and on. Um, but like you, the, the talking like we're doing now is infinitely more fun than the editing and the posting and the, all that, that stuff yeah. is the worst part. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, back then I think was probably the end, uh, uh of, of an era, so to speak. It's when, it's when the comic uh, convention started to get really big. Right. And it was hard to gather a small group of, of peers and friends artists just to you know sit in a hotel room and just you know blather on about uh anything under the sun <laughs> and uh you know the, the shows just got too big and dinners got too long and and uh you know commissions you know took over the evenings and and uh it just it just stopped uh really then i haven't i haven't enjoyed um having a really good comic conversation with a small group of peers since then really it's uh, yeah it is and, and it's something that's that's missed and um you know it's just one of those things that time time just changes things over over years uh, but you know i still get to see my friends and, and uh um, you know people whose work i i enjoy at shows you know fortunately that's still happening um I missed you. Um, I think last year. So I, I often go to the uh, the Bell County Comic Con, which is down in oh, okay. uh, south of uh, south of Dallas. In right, right. Uh, but that's I, I'm curious. I, I like that show. I, I like the smaller cons are definitely the favorites for me. I, I go to San Diego, go to New York, but um, the smaller cons you at least have more of a chance to have some of those conversations you're talking about. Oh, absolutely. I I really break conventions down for me into really business conventions uh, mm-hmm. because they're they're so um, uh, not in a nasty way, but they're oppressive. There's yeah. so much going on, and your concentration is is broken up, and you can't have a, a, a lengthy conversation because there's a lot of people there, and uh, there, there's so much going on during that weekend. And then you have the casual conventions, which are very, um, uh, once again, not to be derogatory, but they're much slower conventions where you can take the time to talk to fans. Bell County is like that. Uh, one of the bigger shows uh, that is like that is um, um, Shelton Drum Show, uh, Heroes uh, are, are Defined uh, in uh, uh, North Carolina. 
Uh, that's a that's a very big show, but it's a very casual show. Yeah. And you get the chance to talk to the fans uh, at that show. And so that's one of the reasons why I like to do um, a couple of big shows and a couple of small shows uh, every year. I'll do New York and, and uh, San Diego and uh, uh, C2E2. Um, yeah. Although C2E2, now that I'm not living in Chicago, uh, anymore might be a little bit uh, a little bit more difficult, but I'll put that I'll put that in the schedule because it's always been a good show. Yeah, and then um, you know I'll do three or four small shows around the country, like like Bell County, and and um, uh, I'm going to uh, another show uh, in Jacksonville uh, here in Florida uh, next year, um, and, and so it's it's an opportunity to get to areas of the country that I wouldn't normally see the fans from at the bigger shows. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, uh, I don't know if it's common. I've never really talked to any other creators, you know, about how they approach shows, but, you know, it's just one of those things that, that I kept in, in my head uh, when I started going to shows, what I realized is that, you know, people can afford to go to the big shows, but a lot of people can't. And so I've chosen shows in various parts of the country that I haven't gone to before because I think those fans appreciate that, that I would take the time to uh, uh, accept an invitation from somewhere that's not, you know, a big city, doesn't have a big budget. And, and you know, it's just for me to get out and meet the fans. And uh, that's that's the big joy for me. Yeah, it's it's it's. T- I think a lot of people do. I mean, we've had um, a couple artists. We've had Sean Murphy here talking about kind of his his convention strategy and and just you know and, and but a similar thing. You know, you have some big shows that are going to be kind of money making shows where it's hustling for business. Like you said, I like I like the word you use. It is it is um it is it is that overwhelming. It's that uh, you know just too much going on. It's very hard yeah to track yeah. And that's that's one of the things that that I I I that has sort of made me stop doing the drawings, big, big drawings of the show. I, I can do sketches and remarks and stuff at the show, but some people want a bigger uh, a piece, you know, a nine by 12 or something with more detail. And, and uh, I can't do that uh, at a show because there's so much um, input, so much sensory input yeah. going on that I can't concentrate on drawing. So, uh, so I'll do a smaller thing where I don't have to think as much, but um uh, the fans uh, uh, are are more often um, okay with me taking something back to the room and doing it overnight, where I can sit in quiet and play some music, and and you know be in a more studio uh, type setup, uh, sure. where I I can draw with a little bit more concentration. Uh, so yeah, I've I've had to apologize a little bit uh, because I you know I know there are artists that can just sit down and and you know crank out some really beautiful artwork, right? at their table at shows and, and, you know, I'm just not one of those. Um, so but, many people I talk to are, are like you though. They, they have to, you know, with, you got the fan, the hum, the noise, people coming in and out, grabbing onto your table. There's just, you're constantly interrupted. It's just very hard to get. Over. Right. It is. Yes. Um, I, I asked this to everybody, so hopefully it's not too much of a personal question, but what day you, do you, you do commissions? You have people come up and ask you to do certain things. I'm assuming. Oh, oh yeah. All, all the time. And uh, now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm 65. You know, I've, I've spent a good, you know, 40 years in the industry. And uh, it's been working, you know, on other people's projects for the most part. Right. And so a couple of years ago, I decided I was going to cut down on, on some of that work and start doing some work uh, of my own. So I started doing some of my own paintings for myself, uh, choosing projects that I know I would have more fun with. And finally, to the to the pleasure of a lot of my fans, taking commissions. Because yeah. up until about maybe five years ago or, or just a little bit longer, I hadn't done any commissions at all. And so, uh, so yeah, uh, basically, uh, uh, part of my income now uh, is taking commissions. And, uh, uh, you know, and I'd, I'd say, you know, 60, 70 percent are Star Wars. Sure. No, no. It, and and it I'm not I'm I'm not going to knock that at all. You know, I I I know that I made my career in Star Wars, and I love playing in that sandbox. 
I love that. I, I, there's, there's people have been, you know, bothered by kind of what, what gave them the popularity or where, where a lot of people came from. And I'm, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's always better to me when people can take joy out of it. Cause that's certainly where the, what the fans have, but, but, um, but I want to ask you, so, uh, I, I've asked this to, to Sean of Kari of, of kind of a bunch of different artists. Um, what's the, what's the weirdest commission somebody asked you to do? I can't talk about that in <laughs> a podcast of this nature. It's definitely not safe for work. That's fair. And I turned, I turned it down. Yeah. That's because, what everybody says. Almost exactly like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I've, I've done weird things. So I had one, uh, client, uh, that asked me to do, um, uh, a, a, a female, uh, actress with the, uh, body of, of an animal. Yeah. Sounds right. And, uh, you know, I did that, but I, I, I felt icky afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know i yeah so i've i've said no to quite a few uh yeah quite a few commissions because i'm i'm just not that guy uh, i'm sure there are other artists well i know there are other artists that that would that would do that with a, a more sense of uh uh interest but yeah. Yeah. for me you know there there has to be something that i can invest you know that little bit of myself into to make it sure. that, uh, you know, a nice piece. You have to. I, I had an artist on the on the show once. He he, said he got into this run where he had a lot of fans asking for feet, pictures of feet, and it, yeah, he said it just got weirder and weirder and weirder. And it's like, yeah. okay, we're stopping there. I can so, understand. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so kind of shifting gears again, and yeah. and, and again, um, I want to encourage everybody. You're listening to this. Uh, there's a project, Oil and Water, the art of Dave Dorman. It's uh, it's on Zoop. Coming here, it should be. I think we'll, we release this on the day it releases, so you should be able to go get to it. Links, okay, description everywhere. So go go grab that. But in terms of your your um, your, your education, because um, you know, I, I talked to uh, the family of Ed Score recently, and and a couple different people, and they have a similar one part of a similar story. I think to, I think to you. So you you uh, your your colleges, or when you when you attended university, um, you it. it I, I believe if this is correct, if I've done my research right, you, you you attended for like a year, and then you went to a different. You went to the Kubert School, and then you attended a year. Is that is that right? Are your yeah? Give your researcher a, a dollar for that. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, uh, I came from a military family, and we moved around a lot. I'll, I'll give you the Camilla um, Harris answer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a middle class, uh, uh, you know, kid. Aren't we all? Yeah. The middle class. Uh, anyway, um, uh, yeah, so uh, when I was growing up, uh, we moved around a lot. Dad was Air Force, and uh, we couldn't really keep um, – uh, I'm, go I'm going way before school, so I can you – no know, worries. That is to how I got to school. Um, uh, and one of the few things that that I was able to bring, you know, I, I had an older brother and younger sister, and, and we each had our own things that we could bring from, from – Base to base and house to house, and and one of the things that uh, I I brought was my my minuscule comic book collection uh, because I loved comics and and uh, I loved reading them and I loved the artwork, and so that was something that that is a fond memory of, of for me uh, in my younger years. And then uh, uh, in I got into high school, and I started drawing and, and painting about that time. Uh, not seriously, but as as just an expression of of how much I loved that art form, right? And uh, uh, you know, I was a, I got to be a little bit more of a comic collector when we uh, ended up outside of Washington D.C. and and lived there for ten years uh, in my teen years and, and growing up, and so I was able to buy more comics and keep more comics, which for me was more reference of artwork and cool stuff that, uh, you know, I could learn from. And, uh, uh, in, uh, in high school, um, you know, the uh, pressure was made, uh, you know, as, as it is with, with every kid, you know, what you got to do with your life. And, uh, I was, I was planning on going to school, uh, with a football scholarship, um, because we were, we had a very good football team and, and I really enjoyed playing football. Um, but uh, uh, in the senior year, I banged up my knee and and couldn't play anymore. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, I had to make a decision, you know, no scholarship for Dave, no, no free ride at, uh, at school, uh, you know, while, while he makes up his mind on what he wants to do. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, you know, in, in my uh, senior year, I just, you know, said, okay, I'm going to be an artist. And so I, I sat down and I just spent all my time uh, drawing and painting, all my free time. And uh, I really loved it. And my parents really saw how much I loved it as well. And so when it came time to decide, you know, where I wanted to go to school, um, obviously a liberal arts school was was the place to go because they have the art uh, curriculums. So I went to uh, um, uh, St. Mary's of Maryland, which is in, in Southern Maryland, yeah. uh, uh, with a, an art uh, major. But like, Almost all schools uh, uh, in the United States, an art major is more of gallery style painting, uh, not illustration. And I wanted to learn illustration. Uh, and um, uh, so I spent the year there and, and it wasn't it wasn't a wasted year. And it certainly opened my eyes to, you know, a greater history of art. But it still wasn't what I wanted to learn. And so. During that year, um, uh, the Joe Kubert School opened. So this would have been 77? Yeah, late 70s. Yeah, or 78. So, uh, um, you know, being a comics fan and, and knowing Joe's work, and there was a, a whole list of other artists that were teachers there that, that I knew there were. And, uh, you know, I talked to my folks, and, and, and I said, you know, I'm not learning the type of artwork I want to learn. That, that I was teaching myself at home, uh, can I, you know, or really can you afford to send me uh, to this school in New Jersey? And they didn't know who Joe Kubert was. They didn't know anything about that uh, other than, you know, it's something that I wanted to do. But they supported and you. They were very supportive. I couldn't be where I am today, you know, all these years later, really. Without the, their support, I, I was very lucky in that respect. And a lot of artists, um, uh, you know, unfortunately, don't have that kind of support behind them when they're younger. Right. And I really feel bad for them because I, I felt the the luck was was behind me, and uh, it got me further quicker uh, than than uh, uh, having to struggle really hard. And not having someone, you know, behind me, uh, uh, pushing me. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, they said, yeah, uh, you know, we'll look into it. And, and if it's what you want to do, that's what we'll do. And so, yeah, so my second year of, of education uh, was the Kubert School. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I had just started to paint really seriously at that time. But I still really loved the comics format and continuous panel drawing. And, and that was a love that I had had, for, you know, 15 years prior to that and just reading comics. And uh, I was very excited. And so um, uh, I got up there and met everybody and, and met Joe and, and uh, made a lot of friends uh, in, in that year because it was the second year of the school. So uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, great artists that came out of it. Um, uh, Rick Veach and, and uh, Tom Yates and uh, Steve Bissett and John Taliban and, and Ron Randall, Tom Mandrake, Jim right. Durf, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, just just you know a, a, a load of people that were uh, have built good careers in this industry and and uh, so I was there and um, throughout the year uh, I got less and less. Um, enamored with creating comic books. But I still love to draw. And um, um, I, I found myself drifting towards making single illustrations mm -hmm. rather than continuous panel. The, the pages that I would do, I'd put more work into each individual single panel than should have been because that's where my focus was. I, I couldn't focus on on telling that story six panels on a page for 24 pages. Um, and uh, so at the end of the year, uh, Joe called me into his office and said, uh, 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 Dave, you know, 
we've seen your painting because I was doing some painting at the school as well. Uh, and uh, we, we've looked at what you're doing. And um, uh, he said, you're doing very well in what you're doing, but it's not a direction that the school can can give you anything more with. Because he, he, he knew I wanted to do single illustration, which is what painting was about. Right. And uh, they had no color curriculum at all in those years. Yeah. It was just black and white uh, pen, pencil, pen, and ink drawing. And so he said, he said, Dave, I, I'm going to advise you not to come back next year because it's a waste of money. And now whoever heard of a school saying to a student, hey, don't come back. You know, incredible. we don't want we don't want your money. <laughs> just incredible. I, I Yeah, that that's certainly not how it is today. But but yeah, that's that's some nice ethics on the part of Joe. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. And so, you know, I took that advice. You know, I, I, I you know, talked to my folks and, and, you know, I moved back home. And for about three years, uh, I lived at home. I had a little little drawing area. I had a, I had a bigger bedroom in the house, so I had a drawing area um, uh, in the bedroom. And I got a part-time job. And I uh, every, you know, waking hour, I, I would... Uh, just sit at the drawing table and I would draw and I would paint and I would look at, at other artists and be inspired by the types of illustration that, that I wanted to learn. And I, you know, just knuckled down to the drawing board and, and I learned it. And uh, so after, and, and I, I put this in, in, in my head, and it, it took me about three years to make my first professional sale which was a cover for heavy metal magazine. Right. So I look at it as my four years of college, which was really, you know, five years per se, but you know, it was those three years I would have been in a, a normal college, uh, just, you know, being a uh, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, and then, you know, be kicked out into the real world. So after three years of, of doing it myself, I started getting professional work mm -hmm. and, and it was from going to shows and going to New York is before the internet. So I'd get my portfolio and I'd hop on a train from Washington, DC to New York city, and be dropped off in the middle of, uh, uh, middle of New York at, uh, you know, Madison square garden station. And it'd be like that, that does, does movies where the camera sort of goes around you, uh, looking up at the sky as scrapers. And uh, you walk it through the city. And uh, that's what it was. I mean, I was sending out the photographic portfolios to the publishers. And and uh, once a year, I was taking a trip to New York. And, yeah. There's some uh, romance to that. I mean, it's, it's, it is the self-taught artist. Um, yeah. Certainly learning to, uh, some in college, but just then pursuing your dream. I just, I'm fascinated by the, I didn't know this part. You were, you were on a track to be a football player. I was. And then... <laughs> But wound up becoming one of the most prolific Star Wars <laughs> artists in the in the world. It's I, that's 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 a hell of a transition there. Well, you know, um, it, it was it was scary, but but I was really confident, and I think the thing was, I knew that I had to do the work. Yeah. Because if I if I didn't do the work, I wouldn't succeed, and I think that that uh, uh, that drive. Uh, had had really pushed me to to make sure that I was constantly learning and constantly growing, and um, uh, you know I I have to give my father a little bit of credit on that. He was um, uh, a builder of radio control airplanes, the large airplanes that guys fly um, uh, with the little box with the sticks and, and stuff. Um, that, that hobby is, is a fairly big hobby. And, uh, part of that hobby is building, uh, replicas of actual fighters, uh, from various wars. He, he was a, a specialist on World War II fighters. And, uh, he, he would do what they call standoff scale, which means that uh, if you were 10 feet away from a plane and you looked at that, that model plane, it, it had to be detailed so close that you couldn't tell that it wasn't an actual wow. plane. Okay. So all the details had to be there, the rivets and the cockpit 
and the, the, the oil stains from the engine and blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> he built those. I'm seeing and, this connection now, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I would be with him uh, in, in his workshop. And when I was younger, I built uh, tanks. I was an armor fanatic. A, a hobby builder. So I built uh, uh, tanks, mo- model tanks, plastic tanks, and painted them and, and did all that stuff. But it was in the same uh, workshop that my dad was in. So I, I had, uh, and, and I think this really uh, affected me sort of subconsciously, uh, seeing him devote so much time to making sure that those details were were perfect for the reference that he was using for whatever specific plane that he was making a replica of, and and I I really do think think back and and think that yeah that was instilled in me uh, when I decided to uh, move into illustration uh, as my work. Yep. No, you can you can see it here. I mean, you're you're credited often for the the hyper realistic, but also the detail. Mm-hmm. They usually get that part second, but the yeah detail that goes into every piece is, is always yeah and and certainly that was something that that i love to do not not just give an overall impression of a scene or a character but you know go in and, and work with you know little details on you know belts and and guns and you know hinges and and things that uh that people don't see right away but i know that there are a lot of fans that like to look at the art not just uh, it, not just experience it as as a whole, but look at the detail, and that's of my interest uh, in creating those pieces is, is being able to look into it, you know, step up to it, you know, a foot away, and say, you know, wow, that's that's really interesting the way this was done or that was done or something like that. It's always eye catching. Again, being at at cons and seeing your setup and and walking by and the, the conventions. It's it's a little bit like being in Times Square, but you know, a couple feet from the billboard. So it's like very, <laughs> it's very overwhelming. But I, I've watched many people come by. They hit your uh, your area, and there and there's a there's a pause there because it's just so strikingly different. It's uh, yeah, yeah, it, it is, and and it's it's different than uh, uh, you know just a lot of the comic book stuff. Uh, n- not saying that that every comic book artist is the same, but. Uh, I I approach what I do in a little bit different manner, being mm-hmm. a little bit more colorful or a little bit more bold, or um, and that that's what I'm hired for is to make people stop and look uh, at at whatever product I'm I'm promoting. You know, sure. no the the marketing of it. Oh. Like, yeah, there. Yeah, so. um, you you mentioned you're you know being a fan of comics reading comics uh, is there any like what over the last couple of years is there any comic that that you're really hooked on or something that you've been you've been reading um you know it, it's really funny that over the past i'd say about 5 to 8 years my my reading of comics has changed uh quite a bit mm-hmm. uh, and i guess it, it becoming an old guy <laughs> <laughs> now now <laughs> but you know, you know, I, I I think that it's just the buildup of the disillusionment of yeah superheroes over the years. What I grew up with, and even even in the eighties, they were okay. In nineties, they started to change, and and mm-hmm. you know, after two thousands, everything just really changed a lot. And and I started uh, uh, not enjoying uh, a lot of what was being done in the American comics field. And I'm talking about the the main, you know, Marvel yeah, these days. The main guys, yeah. Yeah, so I started reading uh, a lot of um, European translated uh, um, uh, product and uh, manga. You know, I, I, I never really enjoyed anime um, uh, during the, the 80s and the 90s, uh, even though I did Robotech covers for uh, mm-hmm. like three or four years for Kamika. Um, but... Yeah. You know, it, it was just the, the art in in the anime um, wasn't exciting enough. Being a movie fan, you know, um, yeah, anime to, to movies, and so it just wasn't there. But um, uh, just over the past couple of years, I've started to um, to watch anime a little bit more, and I, I found that the the writing of the material 
is is far superior than what I thought it was. Mm-hmm. Which makes the animation not as uh, simple, I guess, would be the the description. Yeah, that uh, makes sense. Uh, you know, the the story carries the uh, story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I uh, I think a lot of people could relate to that, and and it also makes sense. I think the anime was a lot more simplistic. If you look back ten years ago, there are even or, and further back for sure, right. Uh, and and now you're, but you you you've had the rise of, wow, the storytelling that that really paints a rich story. Um, yeah, it, it's it, it was really surprising to to see how complicated and how emotional uh, those stories could be. Yeah. And, um, uh, so in in my search for, um, you know, interesting things to read, you know, in in the comic format. Uh, because I, I, like I said, read a lot of European stuff. I still read a lot of, uh, um, American, um, non-superhero, uh, graphic novels and, and compilations. Um, but I started reading manga and, uh, uh, I, I would search out horror and, and, um, uh, supernatural because that's my inkling. That's my enjoyment of, of reading. Um. Uh, and so uh, I started, you know, picking up stuff. And I look at the artwork first because they have a very different way of, of expressing themselves artistically uh, in in Japan and and yeah. Uh, so so for me, um, art is a real big part of of how much enjoyment I I get out of a a, a, a project. Uh, so it was it was really hard for me to. Um, uh, sort of adjust to how that style of artwork was um, uh, used to express what they needed to in, in, in a very different way than, than American uh, artists approach. Uh, it's much more visceral and much more emotional and uh, mm-hmm. much, much faster paced uh, as well. Uh, I found manga to be very, very interesting in its, in its diversity of story and diversity of art. And so I started reading a lot of that. And uh, that's been my primary reading for, uh, you know, quite a while. I go to this to the comic store every week and, and I look at what's being done and I buy a few things. You know, I love Hellboy and, and uh, mm-hmm. um, uh, what else do I buy regular? Uh, Conan the Barbarian, the new Conan uh, book. Um, probably a couple of others. Mo- most of uh, most of the ones are usually um, mini series, and, and I'll just you know, pick them up and, and wait until the four issues and six issues are, are done, and then I'll read the whole thing. Um, but uh, manga uh, coming in, I guess, so late. Uh, you know, there's just dozens and dozens of volumes of series out there that uh, if I if I love it, you know, buying the first one, you know, I know there's 24 more books that. I can read right. uh, that uh, that are are going to be fun, and so I'm, I'm not disappointed when when the one ends that there's not going to be any more. Uh, so that that's a, an interesting uh, um, approach to to reading. But the the uh, um, the art, believe it or not, uh, that's starting to influence me a little bit. Oh yes, yeah? yeah. I've been uh, looking at a lot of. Um, uh, Asian art, Japanese, Korean, Chinese uh, uh, art, uh, and a lot of that is stylized not necessarily, excuse me, not necessarily uh, in the manga style, but their approach to the stylization of of, of people and and animals and, and such. And um, uh, I guess you know, I've gotten to the point where I'm, I'm very satisfied, or I, I know that I've gotten to a point where I've been very satisfied with my style. And, and I always try to, to challenge myself in, in every piece to be able to keep it interesting and yeah. to, to move forward as an artist. And, um, just over the past four or five years, I've really been intrigued by, uh, um, finding a lot of these Asian artists and, and artwork and seeing what's being done over there um uh and in just the the style and the boldness of of uh the art and and i i think a lot of it has to do with uh the culture of of art being passed on 
generation to generation mm-hmm. um, and and the uh, um, uh, the purpose of the art and the desire to to create makes that art much more um, not, dynamics not the word but much more uh, rich maybe rich yes rich that's that's a good word for it and yeah. so uh, um, you know I, I don't know if it's really obvious and what I'm doing in in my new artwork uh, for the stuff that I'm doing for myself, yeah. Uh, but you know, I'm I'm allowing some of that to influence me a little bit, so that I can push myself into a, a little bit of a different direction in in some of the pieces. And uh, you know, it's, it's well, it's it's like you know, uh, in when I started out, you know, I was I was uh, learning from Frazetta and Boris Vallejo, and then uh, you know, in the '80s. Uh, I started uh, uh, looking more at uh, uh, Richard Amso and, and uh, Drew Struson for movie posters, and and uh, uh, Tommy Jung, and and then in the eighties uh, uh, and nineties, it was just uh, uh, a plethora of learning about illustrators from the nineteen hundreds to the nineteen forties, and okay. and uh, you know now it's uh, it's taking it to, well, and then you know Mobius and Inky Belial and and. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, Philip Jure and, and uh, Francois Schritt and, and these guys from France. And so, you know, it's, it's, my, my career has just been a, a, a sponge, sort of, you know, having all these influences come into me. And I think a lot of artists are that way. Um, but uh, now it's, it's uh, you know, the fascination with, um, with Asian artwork. So, you know, who knows where that's going to go, but uh, that's, that's where I am right now is, just reading a lot of manga and and uh, I'm on uh, uh, you know Pinterest looking at uh, all sorts of stuff. One of the nice things about modern technology is you can reach around the world in just one second, and, yeah, uh, and check out what's being done. So that's really awesome. I didn't know. I'm anxious to now look at some of your work and see how it's uh, see if there's a if you can see any of the evolution there. That's yeah, well, cool. the the book the the zoo book Oil and Water is going to have uh, very up to date. Uh, uh, pieces. As a matter, as a matter of fact, uh, some of the uh, one of the things that I'm doing as a, as an extended reward is I'm painting four brand new pieces during the course of the uh-huh. of the uh, um, event, uh, which will be for sale as well as in the book. So, I mean, the the book will be as current as what I'm working on right now. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So uh, so fans will be able to see you know, where I am as, as opposed to where I was, I'm going to have my very first heavy metal cover, you know, in the book as well. So, uh, it's going to cover a lot of ground. Oh, that's, that's really cool. Um, and, and again, so we've talked through it and then kind of time's flying by, but, um, you know, we're just, I'll say something I said at the beginning, a lot of people sure. will look at your work and they will recognize something and then put it together you know, this guy who did Indiana Jones and who did Star Wars and who did G.I. Joe and, and also a lot of a lot of your own things. And, and, and for that matter, a lot of kind of classic comic characters. You did you did some big work for Marvel and some big work for right. DC, you know, and right. And um, it's it is uh, it's really impressive just the sheer volume of what you've done and the people you've worked for. You, you've done uh, work in film. You've done things for some of the you know, the biggest studios, biggest movies, comics, I mean, and, and like green card games. Yeah. Like it, 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 it's, <laughs> it's an incredible, incredible career. I've been very lucky. Um, and, and I think I I've made my own luck in, in some respects too, because early on I, I made that decision to, to be diversified, uh, to not just sit back and, and say, okay, this is all I'm going to do. And so I took the opportunities when they came to, to um, uh, you know, contact people that I had met at uh, conventions, like you know, card uh, card people, uh, you know, doing you know the, the Star Wars cards for tops and and you know other things and and the Magic the Gathering that was just you know something that that came out of the blue. Uh, I was at a convention, uh, um, I can't remember what it was, and. In, in, uh, 1999 and art director came up at one show and said, uh, I, they really love your work. You ever thought about doing, you know, magic cards? And I said, not really. I don't play the game. 
<laughs> but and I've never really looked at it. And and he gave me a couple of cards, and he said, "Yeah, you'd you'd fit great in what we're doing." So I did that for eight years, and uh, you know the 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 toy stuff. You know, a lot of that came from uh, just being associated with Lucasfilm, uh, doing you know stuff for them, and uh, uh, through Dark Horse uh, with uh, Aliens and, and Predator. A lot of people don't know that I designed the uh, the toy line for uh, Alien Resurrection. Yeah. So, you know, that's all stuff that was just design work. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't actual, uh, um, you know, package artwork or anything, but it was just design work. And, uh, uh you know, so yeah, I, I, uh, incredible. I, keep, I keep my ears open for fun projects and, uh, uh, I just, um, uh, I, I just, you know, go with what, what my heart says. If people, people say, you know, how, how, um, they comment how much I enjoy talking about what I do. Yeah, I do I? I really do, and uh, I do lectures and and I do uh, uh, demonstrations at schools and and just uh, a lot of different things that um, uh, really help people understand what I do and maybe encourage them a little bit more, especially the the elementary school and, and junior high. Mm-hmm. You know, letting them know that uh, you know this is a, a very potential uh and possible you know good way to make a living and um uh and i just it's very exciting for me to talk about what i do um mainly mainly because i i do i do it in the solitude of my studio (laughs) and uh i don't i don't often get the chance to uh uh to do that so uh yeah i probably blathered on no, not at all. It's ex- I, I, I definitely I'd love to to talk to you and Joe, who, who often interviews with me. Uh, I know I'd love to talk to you too. But uh, so maybe we, we we can talk again at some point. You're a natural podcaster, so we got to get you, we should get you back. Uh, thank you. Know, tell me stories. Um, I, I think you know, but but you said something that's a good way to conclude. And by the way, you know, again, if you're listening, to this, go check out the Project El Zub. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's an incredible collection. There's some new stuff, oil and water, the art of Dave Dorman. Yeah, but before before we get to this, and I don't yes. know you're going to talk to uh, talk about, but uh, the title, oil and water. Yes, please. I, I chose specifically. Tell us about that because um, because I taught myself how to paint. Um, teachers. And other artists will say you can't mix acrylics and oils. So acrylics are yep. water-based paint, and oil obviously is oil-based paint. So oil and water don't mix. Well, because I taught myself how to paint, nobody was looking over my shoulder saying, "Don't do that. You can't do that. That's not the way it's supposed to be done." <laughs> and, uh, and I did it. And, uh, you know, I, I've talked about it and I made demonstrations and, and, uh, it, it's, it's, it, they work together very well in the way that I've taught myself how to do it. So that when you look at a painting, you can't tell whether a part's in acrylic or a part's in oil. And so, uh, uh, I thought that, uh, you know, one of the distinguishing things about the way I approach my hard work is that, um, it's not always oil and there's and and it's not always acrylic but on on top of the oil but it's part of my working routine and and i i think within my peers uh i think it surprises them a lot when they find out that i do that because they they it's not supposed to be done so that's why it's called oil and water is um uh, it's that's that's what I work in, you know, oil paints and acrylics. Uh, I love it. I love. It. I like the uh, you know I, the photorealistic attention to detail, breaking the rules. Yeah, I love it. And self taught, it, really cool. I, I you know I'll I'll just kind of repeat something you said earlier. Um, it's very clear from kind of just talking with you, and hopefully everybody's listening to this too. Um, you do love what you do, yeah. and. A lot of people in this space, um, they're they're into comics, but it, it, it's a grind, right? They, they've they've had it's it's been hard as much as as anything else, and and you see people struggling with that love. But you have not lost any of that love. You several several decades now of doing incredible work, iconic work, and you're 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 a fan, right? I, I am. Uh, I, I there's there was hard years, you know, financially, sure. and uh, uh, literally. 
there's one year I can't remember the artwork that I did uh, because of, of, you know, certain things that were, were happening. This would have been, you know, yeah. uh, 07 or 08 when, uh, when everything was just falling apart. Uh, yeah. And, uh, um, but, you know, I get shown art that I did during that time that I can't remember doing, and it was still, you know, good art. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, I guess that subconscious thing just, uh, you know, kept me going, uh, through that time. But yeah, um, I do love what I do and I, I constantly tell people it's the greatest job. And really, w- I, I would love to talk to you again. Uh, yeah. I'd I'd be happy to talk anytime. Good. Well, let's let's uh, let's catch up and and we could kind of swap some other stories from, from okay. where it goes. But but please go check out the project. You have the link there, Dave. Wonderful to talk with you. Well, thank you, Perch. I I appreciate that. I've enjoyed your show for years, and and it's okay. a pleasure actually meeting you virtually. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know, hopefully next time you see me at a show, you know, say say hey. hey. I will. I've, I've, I've run into you shows before, but I've never introduced yourself to me. I hear my voice is distinctive. We'll see. But now you, know, now yeah. you see the face. Well, the face is also well, pretty now, now, I, now I know the face, so uh, that, that's, uh, that's going to be the thing that, uh, that tweaks my brain. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, it was a pleasure being here. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for promoting the book. And uh, I believe uh, October 1st is when, uh, when we're going to do the, uh, the opening day. We'll get this out. So go check it out, everybody. And and Dave, we'll, we'll, um, I will reach out. We're going to talk to you soon. Okay, that sounds great. All right. Take care.